Who exactly are the best running backs in the NFL? You could have an open debate. You could pretty much say, well, there's a lot of names you could say. There's Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Nick Chubb, Josh Jacobs, Chris Carson, Marlon Mack, Aaron Jones, and many more. To settle this, I decided to take things into my own hands. With the help of a friend, we made the RZFL running back grading system. A system that takes both PFF grades and statistics to go ahead and see who the best back in the NFL is. Now, we'll let the statistics speak for themselves. I took a list of about 20, over 20 different running backs, put them together, took the top 10 average in the league, and every single of seven different statistics being pro football focus grade, rushing yards, runs of 20 plus, yards per carry, total touchdowns being receiving and rushing touchdowns combined, scrimmage yards, and broken tackles. These stats are to measure who's the best all around back. Explanation, well pro football focus, that is professional. They're professionals who grade players based off their play-to-play -play performance. Those are that touches on what stats can, touches on the film aspects of it. Then you have rushing yards, okay? Just straight up rushing yards. Nothing too fancy about that. Big runs, 20 plus. Well, it was either between 15 plus or 20 plus, but 20 plus was easier to find, I will admit. But also 20 plus shows the explosion, shows who is the most explosive back out of the backfield compared to 15 plus. Then we have yards per carry. That um, symbolizes consistency and who is the most efficient back out of the bunch. Total touchdowns. Well, who can get in the end zone the most? Obviously, scrimmage yards. Who's the best dual threat back around? You know, we have rushing yards. You also have receiving. Receiving a big aspect in who actually is the best all around back in the league. And broken tackles. What can you do when you have the ball in your hands? Can you go ahead and create extra yards for yourself when needed? Those are the reasons why we chose those stats. And let's go ahead and get right into it. Our top five are right here. At number one, Christian McCaffrey. At number two, Dalvin Cook. At number three, Nick Chubb. At four, Josh Jacobs. And at five, Aaron Jones, the top five. Just missing, that was Chris Carson at number six. So my top five based off a of film, pretty close to what actually is, statistically. Let's go ahead and take a look at things. Let's start out with the number five guy, Aaron Jones. Basically, he's got a good PFF grade. Not too many rushing yards, though. That's going to hurt him. But he is in a... Um, he is, there's another back, Jamal Williams, in that backfield as well. So that is, can explain that. Only has one run of 20-plus yards or more. A lot of people jump to the conclusion that Aaron Jones is the best back in the NFL for some reason. And yet, he only has one run of 20-plus all year. Patrick Mahomes has three, and he's only been in the pocket nine Jeffrey. times. Explosiveness, that's a question. 4.4 yards per carry. Where he's going to go great big is the 14 touchdowns, and that's kind of obvious. He's a touchdown machine, and that's why people do view him as one of the best backs in the league. He has 943 scrimmage yards and does lead the NFL in broken tackles, which could also help your case if you're a huge Aaron Jones fan. At number four, we go ahead and jump to Josh Jacobs, who, as I said before, is taking the lead by storm. He's very consistent. I really like the kid out of Oakland. 89.7 tied for first highest pro football focus rate. Over 900 rushing yards on the year and seven big explosive runs of 20 or more. Very good. Solid yards per carry of 4.8. Has seven total touchdowns, which is really good as a rookie. He also has over 1,000 scrimmage yards and 23 broken tackles. Very physical runner, very consistent runner, very efficient runner. And that's why he's number four, statistically speaking. Number three, Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb is a powerhouse who for some reason is being neglected in the top back conversation, even though he obviously should be. PFF grade 81.6, still fairly decent, has over 1,000 rushing yards, leads the league in runs at 20 or more with eight, very explosive guy that can hit the home run ball quite often, to be honest. 5.0 yards per carry, very solid, very efficient runner, has six total touchdowns, mostly because his offensive line cannot block for anything. And I don't want to use the Saquon Barkley excuse, but um, yeah. 1,000, over 1,100 scrimmage yards, and has 28 broken tackles. A all-around good guy, a great runner. That's why he's number three. Standout stats, obviously, the runs are 20 or more. Solid yards per carry. And 
pretty solid rushing yards and scrimmage yards. At number two is Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook, I'm a big fan of, 84.1 PFF grade, has over 1K rushing yards as well, 7 big explosive runs, 4.8 yards per carry, 11 total touchdowns, he's a dual threat in the backfield, we know that, over 1,400 scrimmage yards and 26 broken tackles, he should have graded really well mostly because, well, he's amazing, and pretty much everything. I mean, you look at it, he doesn't really have any weaknesses in the grading system. He's either slightly above the average, uh, either above the average pretty much on every single stat, only below the average on one stat, which is yards per carry. Great. Great guy, great back, and that's why he's number two at such a high explosive grade of 108.8. At number one, Christian McCaffrey. A 112.9, an astonishing grade. Well, he's got the highest PFF grade in the game, tied with Jacobs with an 89.7. Leads the league in rushing with 1,059 yards, has six big explosive runs, a very, very solid yards per carry of 5.3, and has 14 total touchdowns just like Aaron Jones, except he has over 1,500 scrimmage yards leading the league in that, as well as 20 broken tackles. Why Christian McCaffrey grades so well? Well, He's good in literally everything, and also scores where it counts the most in touchdowns, which are very valuable despite only being worth 12.5. Just the way the numbers align is what makes it like that. And those are our top five backs on the RGFL grading system. Now, if I would like to break down things, why everything's weighted the way it is, well, it's because of numbers-wise. Their stuff is pretty much equal. It's either worth 10 or 12.5 besides the PFF grade. And the reason why stuff isn't worth more or worth less is because of how the numbers are arranged. When the top 10 average of something is only 6.6, if you make that worth a ton of points, then anyone that is above the average is really, really, really going to score high, and it's going to, the balance of the scores are going to be uneven. Now, other backs I would like to include um, that that people view as solid backs. Ezekiel Elliott graded a 75. Marlon Mack graded a 79.6. Mark Ingram graded an 80.1. From Saquon Barkley, I buffed his stats up to proportionalize him to 10 games. He's only played 7 games. He only graded a 73.0. I did not include any of Saquon Barkley's buff stats in the top 10 averages. The only one that would have mattered was broken tackles, but didn't include them because none of them would have actually been top 10 average. Someone else I also fooled around with a little bit was Lamar Jackson. I did not have his rushing grade, but I did have his overall grade in all his stats. And he graded an 88.2, which would have been the 7th highest back in the NFL. It's kind of astounding. He has over 6.9 6 yards per carry. Has 8 big runs. 788 rushing yards. Ranks in the top 10 in that. He's a, a beast rushing wise. Can't deny it, even as a Browns fan. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe for more football content and videos like this. This is RZFL Sports. Signing off. Bye, guys. We did it.